live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. There are some awful decisions made by a coach during a game that have a direct impact on the outcome. These are the decisions that you can point to and immediately say that what the head coach decided to do here was the main reason why the team lost the game. Or if not, at least one of the main reasons. And I've covered a ton of these decisions on the channel before. Baltimore Colts head coach Ted Marchabrota not taking the intentional safety with no time left in the fourth quarter up by four against the Detroit Lions in 1977, which led to a block punt touchdown that cost the Colts the game. Green Bay Packers head coach Matt LaFleur inexplicably kicking the field goal at the end of the 2020 NFC Championship against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which predictably resulted in the Packers never touching the ball again. Cincinnati Bengals head coach Sam Weiss doing everything in 1987 against the San Francisco 49ers to completely blow the game, with what might be the worst late game management in NFL history. As a side note, the more you read and learn about Weiss, the more you're baffled how he ever came so close to winning the Super Bowl. This is not one of those decisions. Its impact on the game was minuscule at best. Dare I say, this decision we're about to talk about had no impact on the game whatsoever. It was not the reason why the Dallas Cowboys were losing at the half. Heck, the Cowboys won the game when all was said and done. Having said that, despite it not necessarily mattering, we have to talk about one of the most head-scratching, baffling things I've ever seen a head coach do. It was a timeout so bizarre, so unnecessary, so stupid, and so pointless that if CNC Music Factory were still around, the song Things That Make You Go Hoon would have been entirely about this move. Mike McCarthy, you've done it again. For those of you who aren't watching this in the immediate aftermath of the game, let me set the scene for you and paint a picture of what we're working with here. It's October 17, 2021, and the Dallas Cowboys are traveling up to Foxborough to take on the New England Patriots in a critical interconference matchup. Anytime you have a Jim Nance and Tony Romer on the call in the National 425 spot, you know it's a big one, and this is no exception. The Cowboys enter this game at 4-1, and have complete command of the NFC East at this point. After Washington's loss earlier in the day, if the Cowboys win this game, they'll have a three-game lead through six weeks. While there's still plenty of season left to play, a win here practically puts the division on lockdown. As for the Patriots, they're 2-3, and three, and a win here puts them right in the thick of things for a wildcard spot in the ultra-competitive AFC. Both teams have a fair amount to play for, and both teams can drastically improve their playoff chances if they can walk away from this game with a win. And like most people expected, this is a back-and-forth contest to start off, with nothing really separating either side from each other. After the Cowboys go for a fourth down and get stuffed, the Patriots take advantage of the short field and after just three plays, find themselves on the scoreboard first following a four-yard touchdown run by Damian Harris. The Cowboys immediately answer with a touchdown drive of their own, culminating with Dak Prescott hitting Blake Jarwin on a one-yard touchdown to tie the game. And then, in what feels like a game of anything you can do, I can do better, the Patriots score another touchdown with rookie quarterback Mac Jones hitting Hunter Henry on a 20-yard touchdown. Two drives, two touchdowns. Not a bad start for the Pats. Eventually, after the team's trade turnovers and the Cowboys eventually get a field goal to make it 14-10, the Cowboys come up big in their punt coverage, and for the first time since 2015, they actually block a punt. They have a golden opportunity to take the lead for the first time today. After having the ball at the one-yard line, they try punching it in on the ground. First down, and no game. Second down, and once again, no game. Third down, and instead of handing it off, Dak Prescott keeps it himself this time, and punches it in for the touch. Wait, no game. That's odd. You at least gonna review the play refs? Looks from the top angle like he's in, but okay. You've never screwed up before. I'll trust your judgment on this. Fourth down, and they go for it. And Prescott keeps it himself for the touch. Nope, wait, he fumbled the ball. Great goal line stand by the Pats. Now New England has the ball with 130 left in the half. The Cowboys have one timeout. Get a stop, and you can still get the ball back. You won't have time for much, if anything at all, but it's at least a possibility. First down, and Harris runs it for one yard. After not getting anything, Bill Belichick decides to wave the white flag, not take any chances, and just go into the half, or at the very least, kill as much clock as possible. But the Cowboys still have a timeout. They can get the ball back. Second down, and the Pats take a knee. At this point, Mike McCarthy has two options. He can use his timeout now, or use it after they take the knee on third down. Either way, you're getting the ball back. Just call the timeout immediately after either one of those plays, and you have a shot to do something. Guess when McCarthy decides to call that timeout? What happens though? No, no, he did it. They listened to you. <laughs> Charge timeout. Dallas, their third and final. So I was looking at you, seconds. and then you said they got to call a timeout. No, I, I was saying why at 30 seconds you don't call the timeout. Now I don't understand the timeout at eight seconds. Welcome to Dumb Decisions. Before I break down what happened here, 
This whole series is about taking an in-depth look at decisions made during games that were clearly awful from the start. This isn't something to look bad in hindsight. Rather, this is something to look awful almost immediately. These are moves where your gut instinct tells you right away that there is no way this can possibly work. And sure enough, your gut instinct was smarter than that of an NFL head coach. And for this one, we're taking a look at the mind of Dallas Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy. Before I go any further, I want to congratulate McCarthy, because with this incredibly pointless and ridiculous timeout, McCarthy becomes the first head coach ever to be featured multiple times on Dumb Decisions. He had some of the most baffling coaching I've ever seen on Thanksgiving last year against Washington, when he made not one, but two brain-dead decisions by calling a pass play on fourth and a foot, and then by calling one of the worst fake punts ever about an hour later. If you want to learn more about that, then click the card in the upper right corner. I wanted to go easy on the guy here and didn't want to feature him again, because again, this timeout had no impact on the game whatsoever. But it was so bafflingly stupid that I have to look at it, even if the Cowboys did wind up winning the game. It's not the first time I've done a Dumb Decisions episode on a coach that won, and it won't be the last. So with that being said, let's take a look at why calling a timeout late in the first half with two seconds left on the play clock is a horrible idea. This is not the first time that McCarthy has done something incredibly questionable at the end of the first half of the season. Let's flash back for a brief moment to Week 3, when on Monday Night Football, the Cowboys took on the Eagles. With the Cowboys up 20-7, the Eagles had 2nd and 31 with a minute 55 left, and instead of trying to call a timeout to get the ball back, which was practically guaranteed barring the Cowboys doing something stupid, they let the clock run out and went into the half. I didn't agree with that. In fact, I thought it was ridiculous and incredibly cowardly. But at least I get the logic to an extent. You're up by two possessions, and you don't want to take any chances, especially with how good Jalen Hurts and Jalen Rager can be with drawing pass interference penalties. But this? This timeout at the end of the first half against the Patriots? There is absolutely no defense for this whatsoever. Let's look at each of the two possible outcomes. Outcome number one is the Cowboys call their timeout after second down or third down, meaning that the Patriots are going to be facing a fourth down situation with about seven or so seconds left. Now, are the odds that the Cowboys do anything in those seven seconds great? Not at all. In fact, the most likely outcome is a punt out of bounds, or a fair catch to end the half. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like this idiotic timeout management by Mike McCarthy cost the Cowboys a field goal or a touchdown or critical points. But you never know. The Cowboys blocked the punt earlier in the game. There was no reason why, especially if they set the house, that they couldn't do it again. The last two punts that the Pats got off entering this game were an 11-yard return by Andre Roberts of the Houston Texans and a 12-yard return by Jaden Mickens of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You never know. A big play on a punt return could work, especially when you have playmakers like Wilson and Lamb. Maybe even a shank that gives you a shot at launching a Hail Mary. The point is, at least with this scenario, you have a chance to get points and take the lead. Option number two is, well, whatever the heck the Cowboys did here, as they called the timeout with two seconds on the play clock and called it in no man's land, where now they were guaranteed to not get the ball back. By doing this, you give yourself a 0% chance at leading at the half, when at least in the first scenario, however small it was, you gave yourself somewhat of a fighting chance. Why would you call a timeout here? It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. If you were going to call the timeout, do it immediately after second down or immediately after third down. Don't call it there with two seconds on the play clock. It served no purpose. It truly was the most pointless timeout I've ever seen called in my life. And somehow, it gets even worse than that when you break it down a bit further. Now, if the Cowboys just wanted to go into the half under these circumstances and not burn their timeout, that would be one thing. Much like the Eagles game in Week 3, I wouldn't agree with it and I would think it was cowardly, but at least I understand it. You don't want to risk a muff punt or a roughing into the punter penalty that might set the Patriots up with a Hail Mary opportunity. Again, it's playing scared, it shows no faith and trust in your team, and the Cowboys are talented enough where they don't have to play scared, nor should they, but at least they understand the logic. But the fact that McCarthy called the timeout clearly showed that he wanted to get the ball back. You don't call a timeout where the other team is just taking a knee and running out the clock if you don't want the ball back. Otherwise, you just don't call your timeout and you let the clock run out like the other team was going to do. So there's two possible reasons why McCarthy called a timeout there if that was the case. Option one was because he genuinely believed that his odds of getting the ball back were at their best if the Patriots fumbled the exchange on the quarterback kneel down. Now obviously, this is ridiculous. I've never in my life seen a team fumble the exchange on this. Yes, I've seen teams fumble the ball when trying to run out the clock, such as the Miracle at the Meadowlands, and the absolutely chaotic ending to the Steelers Chiefs season opener in 1981. But I've never seen a team fumble and kneel down. And even if that was the case, they were still going to call a kneel down regardless. So that makes the logic make even less sense. I'm not high on Mike McCarthy at all. But even I don't think he's that big of an idiot to think that that was his reasoning in that situation. He's seen too much football to realistically think that. That leaves option number two. Which is maybe, just maybe, 
Mike McCarthy is god-awful at clock management. I know it's hard to believe, and because McCarthy didn't talk about this bizarre decision after the game, simply because there were way more important and crazy things that happened during this overtime thriller, we can't quite get his first-hand account on the situation like we can with just about every other episode of Dumb Decisions. But I mean, come on. This is the same guy that later in the game inexplicably called a timeout with 20 seconds left in the fourth quarter, knowing that he was going to kick the field goal, and knowing that by calling timeout, he was giving the Patriots the ball back to have a shot at winning the game in regulation when he did not have to do that and could have let the clock run out. But maybe McCarthy just doesn't know how to use timeouts. Because with something like this, and with something like his debacle at the end of the first half, I've got nothing. Absolutely nothing. Again, it had no impact on the game, but it was incredibly pointless nonetheless. There was no reason whatsoever to call a timeout in that situation. If he had saved the timeout for literally two seconds later, just two seconds later, it's a smart coaching play, and maybe the Cowboys can get some end-of-the-half momentum in some long shot but still possible kind of way. Instead, he just wound up looking like a giant idiot on national television. So what do we learn from all of this? If you have one timeout with 90 seconds left and you want the ball back, you call the timeout immediately after one of those downs. You don't call the timeout right as the play clock is expiring, for obvious reasons that now you have no shot at getting the ball back, and the whole purpose of that timeout is negated. Not only do you hurt your team's chances of winning, especially if you're trailing at the half, but you extend the game unnecessarily. And let's be honest, these games are long enough with all the commercials that no one wants that anyways. Calling the timeout right after a play is smart and helps accomplish your objective. But calling a timeout right before a play is incredibly stupid, and completely destroys your objective. Because when all these elements are in play, you can't exactly be surprised when this play backfires. Talk about a dumb decision. Get your official Jaguar Gator 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com, and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot, and be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9pm Eastern for your chance to play NFL Trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed out to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at jaguar9, and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.